Welcome back. So this is second part of the unconstrained parts. So from the previous video, uh, you, you can remember that we were discussing three parts. Okay, um, three endpoints, three parts, three start points. So this is path number one, the flop to flop, which are which we are more familiar with. Then there is a path to the deep end from this side. Then there's a path where this one is the launch and two is this output. Now let's go through each endpoint and see what is when tool calculates arrival and required time, what is available, what is not available, what is missing and whatever is missing, how to provide that. You got that? So that's how we will cover constraining the paths. So look into path number two, what I call is the this portion here. Yeah. So this portion, flop to flop is path two. So and as I said, for every path, we have to calculate uh, arrival time and required time. So what is arrival time? Arrival means arrival of the signal here. What delays, what path it has to go through, what components it has to go through. So arrival, so first one is from here. Again, I'm assuming ideal clocks. We will get to clock tree and all that, clock network delay later on. But right now I'm assuming this delays are only here. Delay, the amount of delay from this clock port to this flop and this flop is exactly same. Or you can say zero delay. Whenever clock comes here, immediately it arrives these two pins. So the first one is flip flop one, CK two. CK is the pin, okay? And uh, Q is this pin. So delay from here to here. Then there is a wire delay. Then the delay through the cell timing arc. So this is net timing arc. This is cell timing arc. Then uh, another delay from here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. And in order to, to get delays, you need a transition time. So let's look into uh, each timing arc. And we will take the delays and transition time together. So tool basically calculates at each node a delay arrival time. And uh, arrival time is the delay between at what time it arrives here. Sometimes delay is an delay between this and this is really arrival time here minus arrival time here. That's actually the delay from this segment. But arrival time is it starts here and time adds up, adds up, adds up. Every timing arc adds up to the total arrival time. Unlike here, we have the full delay. Right? So let's look into the FF1 CK2 output. Now, do you remember from my videos, uh, this information comes from standard cell library. So you look at my videos where I was telling, okay, how you can extract uh, timing information from the standard cell. Now it's getting useful here. So remember that we had output pin. It has a related pin, right? A related pin, what were the factors? It needed a capacitance at the output, kind of an effective capacitance of this segment, which includes the input capacitance of this cell, capacitance of this whole wire, this will cal tool will calculate an effective capacitance. Okay, how tool will calculate that effectively? The input pin capacitance of this node already comes from the standard cell um, information of this. Yeah, remember that input pin has an input capacitance. So this capacitance comes from here. What about a capacitance from here to here? So if you are inside synthesis, Tool or you are inside placement before we actually have routing information. What is routing information? So earlier on, we know this point is connected with this one. And we might know, okay, maybe and during the placement, we know, okay, this cell is placed 50 micron away from this one. But when it comes to this one, in order to get exact resistance and capacitance, we need to know, okay, uh, what metal is the, uh, used the mostly. So typically metal pins are at, let's say, very lowest metal. Then, you know, lowest metal cannot go too far. It will have a lot of resistance capacitance. So tool will take it to metal one, two, three, maybe on three, it goes all the way and then goes down and connects to the pin. I will show you an actual example of a route uh, signal during the routing and that's where we will know. But at the moment, what you need to remember is before actual routing, everything in estimation. So within synthesis placement, we have an estimated resistance and capacitance. When the routed information is there, we actually extract that. We have a tool which extracts those what 
metal wires are there and what capacity what is their land what is their width and all that how much of different metals is used and then it calculates exact resistance and capacity so for so this information is it then estimated or actually we read a spec file a separate file or rc file so from the timing point of view even when there is no r and c yes the delay will be ideal will not be accurate but it will still be able to can um, calculate timing on it okay my point is this net is is constrained uh, this input capacitance constraint so to, tool calculates a capacitance here okay so once you have output capacitance in order to calculate this delay you need output capacitance and input transition time here so how does tool know this remember this one eventually coming from a port so this is coming from a chip port io signal so tool has no idea what input transition is getting because it's coming from the external world so tool may not know and if you don't tell the tool tool might assume zero ideal kind of clock or some value so the first thing you need to provide here is what you need to provide what is the transition time here so you what you want have um how to mention that transition let's do a transition time with slew okay this is slew uh, because transition we are already putting delay with t um so slew is slew so it's like a uh, slew c uh, let's this is a clock port okay so we do clk once we know transition time at this port we will assume that it's the same transition time arrives here or here okay so this is the first thing missing so i think once we have the transition time then it will calculate the delay like for that output care for that transition it will calculate it once that is having uh, then tool will calculate delay at this pin because it knows how much resistance capacity it has estimated or actual when this is there this will have a transition time calculated so first tool will get transition time here then delay here and once the transition time here then we know the transition time here tool calculates also an effective capacitance here so once we have effective capacitance here we know the transition time here tool will calculate the delay through this buffer and exactly same thing will happen on this timing arc and this timing arc and eventually this information also comes from um, wire delay resistance capacitance so it seems like um, we are good here we are good here we are good here 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 this was the only information missing the first one so but once we provide this then it should be good and how you provide this information so uh, this information you can provide with set i'm forgetting i need to check that set is it input transition i'm forgetting something here Or set transition one of these and again I'm, I'm trying to make the training tool independent but sometimes I have to give a tool specific training so some command in whatever tool you are using okay it needs to set that transition and on put get port clock and I will tell you exactly how it's done in and at least design compiler prime term and all that but you can always find these commands uh, within a tool uh, in the manual okay what is the um, command to put a transition time my own transition time on a port you also you can give it a value of 50 and the units will be whatever units in the shell overall in the design you put i'm assuming is picosecond anytime so once you do something like this then you have kind of constrained this properly okay so that was the arrival time then you come into what is the other portion required time now we are calculating required time we know how much delay is here from here 
but how much is the required time? So what is the first thing? Period of the clock. Do we have that? We don't know. I mean, tool has all the tool has then this netlist. It knows this connection. It has its inner capacitors here. Now it knows the transition time here. It knows that it's a clock, but when it calculates this one, how does it know? Like this is coming from outside world. How, how tool does know that what clock it is? I mean, you need to tell the tool, right? Uh, so for that, we we use command in uh, like a create clock. Do I have it somewhere? Okay. Create clock and for example, it, it I mean, it depends on the tool, how you mention it. Um, so in terms of providing these constraints, you can provide an article format or you can also sometimes there's a standard format uh, SDC file synopsis I think design constraints um, something like that I believe that is more I don't know if that exact format is used in cadence too but I believe some of these commands are should be usable in different tools again all my experiences is synopsis uh, so I can tell you that we use a STC file or we can also put this in a tickle file. When you have a tickle file, you do a source and whatever tickle file. When you have an STC, you I think you, you have read STC commands. Again, all these, whenever you get a design compiler, you get a DC shell and you can run commands. You get a PT shell prime time. You can get um, ICC shell or you can get fusion compiler shell and that's where you run the commands the command and then you can um, enter hit enter and then the command will be executed. So you put all this definition transition time inside the file or you put it in an STC file and read with this one. So STC has more standardized commands. Uh, this is more freedom with a tickle file. But you can put it in other of them. So all the constraints file that I'm telling you, uh, this one and this one, again, you need to check the exact syntax. But then you can put an article file and source it or just add the proper stage after you read the netlist or an RTL. Um, and then you have the design inside. And then you can sort this one because you are using get port. Uh, without a design, there is no port, right? Um, and also on the clock name, and I was telling you what you would say name, you just give it uh, clock 100 mega, just the name. Okay, then you say period, period, let's say you put um, picosecond if it's a thousand picosecond. Okay, so thousand picosecond. Um, or you say you can also hmm, and then you can mention where do you want it if I get port and CLK at that port define this clock this is called a master clock you're defining right at the point we will look into master generated uh, kind of clocks in hopefully next video next after next video let's see how much time these parts are taking and but it's a good discussion I don't want to hurry so you can see period without you don't have but once you apply this one then tool knows okay it has a period of thousand picosecond now period is now it it, ha it knows that thousand picosecond this whole number you understand that what is the second one second one is the setup time so in setup time what you do is how is setup time calculated so setup time is calculated if you remember from uh, standard cells so for setup time you need here you need a, what was it you need a transition time here and you need a transition time here okay so this transition time is already calculated this transition time comes from this constraint without this this will not be constrained too but what you will apply there then it has a proper transition time and based on these two it calculates the setup time so now you have everything to have this timing path constraint and to will write out a report for it okay so from here required sorry here arrival here is required 
So that's how you start analyzing the path whether it's constrained or not, and then you start constraining it. Okay, I think the other two paths on the input side and then on the output side, we will look into the next video, next two videos. All right, that's it for now. Thank you. Bye.